like having that like was it a family background was it your dad your mom like what pushed you into motorsport early on in your career i think you know it, it's funny my dad was was kind of casually interested in racing Anyone said he was super passionate about it. a lot of people grow up and like their parents a lot of people in the sport their parents were in it right but uh actually i think it caught my mom by surprise that i got into it but i i don't know i childhood memories of going over and you know sneaking in and watching race cars and Mossport is probably part of it but I, I was into production cars sports cars when i was like when i was 10 i think I'd, all i wanted to do was design sports cars you know and then probably by the time i was about 13 or so 14 maybe that was pretty uh, firmly in motor racing Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Track Limits Podcast presented by Formula Addict. I'm your host, Swish. I'm with my co-host, Henny and yep. Mikey. And today we're in St. Petersburg, not Russia, not Russia, St. Petersburg, <laughs> Florida. And we're here for the Indy race, the first of the, first of the season, which we're really excited about. And we're also here with a fellow Canadian, Woo! a person who uh, <laughs> has helped Red Bull go from seventh in the constructors to four world championships, over 50 Grand Prix wins, now as part of Aero McLaren. Welcome, Gavin Ward. Whoa, welcome, Ooh, welcome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. How you doing? Yeah, great. Yeah. A little Are bit nervous. Stressed? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. No, we're good. <laughs> it's all That's good. Fair. No, it's happy to be here. Amazing. Some fellow Canadians. Yes. yes. We're super excited. We appreciate you making the time. Throughout this interview, we're going to go through a couple of questions that are going to be focused towards racing related questions, but also a little bit more personal rapid fire questions. So uh, we're very excited to, to start off. I think the first question we ask every guest is describe your career for us in one minute. It can be a little bit tough. You've done quite a bit, but in one minute, how would you describe some of the core accomplishments you're proud about? Um, yeah, I mean, I just, I've been lucky to live the dream, to be honest, since I, I wanted to work in racing since I was a little kid. So I, I, I chased that dream, you know, started out doing all kinds of kind of whatever I could do growing up in Toronto and had a bit of exposure at Mossport, Canadian Tire Motorsport Park and volunteered a bit in racing when I was in high school, made the leap when I finished high school to to move to England, went did an engineering degree over there, managed to land a placement um, with Red Bull Racing in its first year after being bought uh, from uh, Jag Jaguar, mm -hmm. which was crazy. And then uh, next thing you know, you know, I I spent uh, 12 years working with them. Yeah, went from seventh place constructor to uh, and nine of those years trackside with them, went, winning four championships, three Monaco Grand Prix, and yeah, 50 races, and then. Did a bit of work in Arrow uh, on their si on that side. Decided I missed the racetrack. Was looking for a bit of a return, maybe to um, more of the racing I kind of grew up with. Okay. So made a leap over to IndyCar. Went to Penske. Kind of again, just pinched me kind of moment where I looked for opportunities in, in IndyCar, and I had the opportunity to go race engineer Joseph Newgarden, defending IndyCar champ. And I was like, well, I can't turn that. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's amazing. Um, and uh, shadowed kind of a for a year in that role and then took over won a championship with him had a couple great years at penske and jumped over to mclaren now we're we're uh now you know leading the team here and trying to trying to do something pretty special incredible and then what first <laughs> drew you to motorsport like i know you talked about you know going to canadian tire park and like having that it, like was it a family background was it your dad your mom like what pushed you into motorsport early on in your career i think you know it, it's funny my dad was was kind of casually interested in racing. Anyone said he was super passionate about it. A lot of people grow up and like their parents, a lot of people in the sport, oh, their yeah. parents were in it, right? But uh, actually I think it caught my mom by surprise that I got into it. But I, I don't know, I, childhood memories of going over and you know sneaking in and watching race cars and Mossport is probably part of it. But I, I was into production cars, sports cars. When mm -hmm. I was like, when I was 10, I think I'd, all I wanted to do was design sports cars, you know, and then probably, but I, by the time I was about 13 or so, 14 maybe, that was pretty f uh, firmly in mo motor racing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's, yeah. I think my mom was like, when I would be waking up at odd hours in the morning to watch Formula One races, she's like, what's Formula One? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then it was like, go to bed. It's like <laughs> I, want to move, I want to move to England to yeah. go like, Do you this. know, to work in Formula yeah. One. And yeah. she's like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we shouldn't have had cable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> but I mean, you grew uh, like when you got your internship for Red Bull, you know, grew up the ranks really quickly. What was that experience like for you? I mean, it's crazy. It's yeah. one of those things. It's like a combination of like hard work and, uh, you know, dedication, but really a lot of good fortune. You know, it's like timing. Mm. It would never happen. Now. 
Like what what happened with me at, at Red Bull was kind of ridiculous. For one, the placement, the a year long internship I did there. We did two years of university, and then you get an option to go spend a whole year in industry, basically. And I, I took that and I actually had a, a Champ Car uh, internship lined up yeah. oh, with wow. a team called uh, it was a, it was it was a startup Champ Car team, and they were gonna, they were actually Canadian, uh-huh. but they lost funding. Oh, no. like pretty much right away right and so that was looking pretty dicey and very late i was like studying for my exams at the end of the year and i got a call from red bull thinking that that like i applied to them i don't know seven months earlier or something thinking that was dead in the water a long yeah. time ago and they're like can you come for an interview i was like well i'm flying home to toronto in four days <laughs> like, <laughs> and you're like yeah can you make it i'm flying home on tuesday can you make it monday mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. they're like yeah sure so i went there did an interview um and uh, yeah, they're like, well, just, you know, I'm like, I'm flying home because I'm supposed to be, st- I-, I was still going to work with this team, even though they were kind of, um, they were still running Formula BMW and mm-hmm. uh, some of this stuff. And like, well, if you can just hold them off for a few days, we'll give you an answer. And like, I flew back to Canada, got yep. a phone call like the day after I got back. So like, you got the job. Woo. Oh, so it was like, that. I'm, all right, I guess I'm going back to England. <laughs> 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 but you know, like, as you said, to go like started in that job and six months into it. Well, the, the thing is, Red Bull now compared to Red Bull then are like mm-hmm. two different places. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. This was the first year. We had a revolving door of senior management. We had turnover in spades. So there was kind of this ridiculous situation where I was in R&D. My boss, actually my original boss quit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then his boss became my boss. Yeah. He also ran the control systems department. At that point, we had trash control in these cars. Yeah, yeah. We're developing the first engine shift gearboxes, all kinds of like electronic goodies mm-hmm. compared to you know where they've gone now. But you had a lot of people working on that, and he was also in charge of that. We had to, someone quit, someone retire, someone get promoted. It's like I got asked six months into the placement, "Do you want to be a track side, you know, test team control system engineer?" Like, yes, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amazing. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, then, yeah. I did like a couple tests of that preseason. Um, that was the RB2, it was the second Red Bull car. It was a bit of a disaster. Yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> but and uh, car wasn't very reliable. Had lots of issues. But anyways, I mean, thrown into it, and then basically at the first race of the year, one of the race team control system engineers resigned. Mm. My boss called me from Australia. He's like, "We want you to come racing. Like, you come racing from like the first European race of the year, which is Imola." And I was like, "Sure." Yeah, the next, next thing you know, I'm like, "I'm doing all the races, all the tests as the only full time control system engineer." <laughs> Uh, tracks like control system engineer for Red Bull just because of like the, the sheer turnover mm-hmm. all, of it all. You'd be on the road for three weeks at a time. We were doing a shakedown every week. We're trying to develop instant shift gearboxes or like, and I, I mean, honestly, it was completely dropped in it. But yeah. like, who gets that opportunity? You oh, know what I mean? Like true. now, people will work. Yeah, five, years, five years, years to yeah, try and yeah. get on the road. Yeah. So. Not to mention, you got to work with some great drivers like Mark Weber, David Coulthard, Danny Rick. Yeah. Uh, who else? Vettel actually. You worked with Vettel as well. Yeah. Yeah. Out of all those, who stood out? Like, who's who's the lasting oh. memory? I mean, it's funny. I think I had the closest relationship with Mark Weber out of all those. Um, you know, I was his control system engineer for a number of years, and then I was control system engineer on both cars with him and Vettel, and then I was then I moved to being performance engineer, or assistant race engineer, or whatever on uh, on Weber's car, and uh, we worked really close together, and and you know had a great working relationship so probably probably mark yeah, although yeah. i kind of very fond of them all to be honest yeah you know um, was there anyone like because to set up the care for them on a race weekend was it hard to manage expectations or or manage what they wanted out of a care and and actually make it work yeah you know i think every driver is different mm-hmm. and i think mm-hmm. um i'm a believer that there is no one uh correct driving style i think you know every driver comes and i think this is the same with almost all sport but people come with their own sort of strengths and weaknesses built in and they've they've naturally kind of evolved to a style that usually works for them you know Mm -hmm. especially when you're talking with people who have got to such a high level makes them unique as well as a driving style that's what fans want to watch yeah yeah and i think you know there's as many driving styles as there are drivers Mm -hmm. so they, they all need something a little different and it's kind of your job to figure that out you know and and a little bit of nudging as well. Like sometimes that style won't be a fit for a sequence of corners, or mm-hmm. it won't be a fit for the way the tires are working on this weekend. And, and you, you then it's about like, well, how do I get the driver to kind of come a little bit out of that? Yep. Their natural instinct without losing, because I think to perform at the the very highest, 
you have to be doing that very subconsciously. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like very naturally. Mm -hmm. So the more that you try and change a driver, like the more you can actually make them act like a beginner. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you have know, to relearn. Yeah. 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 I was going to say like, how do you balance the need then as an engineer for, you know, when you're talking to your drivers and they're pushing for like speed and performance, but you're also like, wait, durability, reliability, that's also something you have to balance. How do you make that balance as, as an engineer? Yeah, you know, I think you can't be overly greedy sometimes. Um, whether it is a, a part that's not proven out. I think when you're when you're dealing with high high level motorsport, like you the truth is you can be prepared enough with new parts that you show up and throw them on the car and you're like that should work, mm -hmm. you know, and or you should know it's not going to work. So mm -hmm. almost like if you're doing it right, that work's already done. Yep. You know what I mean? Though I've seen it not done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you know, it, nothing's perfect. There's always yeah. going to be, you know, things you don't quite expect. Um but then there's also like performance over one lap versus tire durability and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And those are, those, that's a whole nother sort of kettle fish, but yeah, there's, you gotta work with drivers on that a bit more. Yeah. And, and what, what does your race weekend now that you're in Indy look like? You know, what's the process you guys go into coming on Thursday until the end of Sunday? So an Indy car. Yeah. I mean, so today we'll have, um, we'll, we'll walk the track, mm -hmm. particularly important on street circuits, um, you know, permanent track. Not a lot's changed usually, so <laughs> but you'll, you'll still go and just remind yourself, and it's a good time for drivers and engineers to kind of get some time just to review their the pre-event material. And you usually will prepare quite a lot of notes about reviewing how we did last year, changes coming in, any new parts, developments, etc. Mm -hmm. um, today we'll we'll get the team, the whole team, engineering group together with the drivers and and do a bit of a quick uh, review of run plans, make sure we kind of divvy up anything we need to cover as a team amongst us, and. Um, you know, apart from that, uh, that's most of the work today. Cars, yep. the, the mechanics wise, to get the cars, their sort of final setup, uh, ready to go, or it'll get them unpacked today. Tomorrow we'll do that. Um, tomorrow we come in, they'll run the cars through tech, uh, do the last setup on the cars, and then we'll get a we get a practice session. That's our first go on track. Mm -hmm. um, again, one thing you get with street circuits, particularly, but um, and it depends a little bit on the schedule is. The track evolves a lot, yeah. so yeah, you know, yeah, we're yeah. you're putting a lot of rubber down as, as as cars run. So what we get tomorrow afternoon is likely to not really be what matters get come on. qualifying and then race. Mm -hmm. uh, but you kind of want to evolve your setup with with the way the track's going. With that in mind, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, but also you, you work work with the drivers on on um, you know we have, we've got a lot of stuff. And we've got tons of data on these cars, so you're reviewing teammate data. But then we've also got video competitor analysis where we'll be trying to see okay we're weak all our cars are weak versus a team here mm -hmm. or this driver here what are they doing you know you're trying to like and it's it's a bit of like i said i described to someone today it's like you almost got to be a detective on it yeah. right. got like right it's it's a bit of sleuthery it's like you got all this different data available to you whether it's video whether it's video from like the tv feed whether it's onboard video whether it's data you gather whether it's some of the telemetry that's shared amongst all the mm -hmm. teams mm -hmm. And it's your job to kind of like, and then all the timing data that you've got shows you where you're quick, slow, you yep. know, like figure out how to get, be how to get better. Basically. Piece it all together. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Last question though, before we jump to the rapid fire round, yeah. this is actually kind of almost a rapid fire question, but what is the biggest difference between F1 and Indy in your opinion from, from your vantage point? I mean, this is, um, and it's just so much tighter so much tighter i mean i think if you want to be a race engineer in motorsport um there's no better series for it because you know the ability to like design your way into a better race car it does exist mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. we, we do a lot like i think it's a little misnomer actually what they say about indycar being a spec series because the amount of r d that top teams are doing is massive mm -hmm. and it's, it's almost like an untold story mm -hmm. you know but we've been busting our balls all off yeah. you know, <laughs> trying, trying to find you know a couple tens of lap time yeah. but that yep. couple tens of lap time can move you from middle mid pack to the yep. front Fine. here mm. in f1 yeah. you know you're talking about there's a second between yeah sometimes yeah. there's eight tenths of a second between teammates yeah. right yeah yep. and like yep. that'll put you from right at the top to right at the back mm -hmm. in indycar so mm. the, the, the com competition level the ability to like you're, you're trying to get your driver performing at his best, giving you a car that it works as natural as possible with him. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's a much bigger deal. F1 is more about 
the design development race, mm -hmm. you know, and I said, we, we do that here, but it's, the cars are a lot less adjustable, mm. you know, whereas like, we'll be playing around with umpteen different suspension geometries with, you know, um, you know, all, all these different ways to cater a car to a, to a driver and F1, a lot more of it's like, that's the one suspension geometry designed for the year. Yeah. You know, if your driver doesn't like it, <laughs> yeah, yeah. too bad. Too bad. <laughs> well, we we can maybe adapt. try it next year, but yeah. we probably can't even test it. Right. Uh, you yeah. can test it on a simulator, and maybe that's not right. Mm -hmm. you know? So, mm -hmm. anyways, that's a long answer for the question. No, that was good. Love no, it. <laughs> well, that is all the general questions. We're going to get into the rapid fire round in a second. Welcome back, guys, to the Track Limits podcast. We are now getting into the rapid fire round with Gavin. Gavin, you nervous? Ah, uh, terrified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, we're going to kick off. The most yeah, yeah. high pressure situation of my entire life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not even a race. <laughs> this is going to be the most high pressure during yeah. the entire weekend, trust me. But first question right away, rapid answers, full of fire, hopefully. If you could choose any driver, living or dead, to work with as a race engineer, who would it be and why? Oh. Gilles Okay. Hi, Although go. he probably... <laughs> Didn't care too much for his race. Yeah, 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 yeah. Think he's it. Canadian. <laughs> yeah, like Canadian. Yeah, yeah. He's a badass. I mean, yeah, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm, I'm guessing he'd be probably calling me an idiot. That's okay. Oh my god. Yeah, as long as he's getting wins, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, funniest moment you've ever had on a race weekend, mm. or embarrassing moment. Mm. Let's hear that. Oh, mm. funniest moment on a race weekend. I mean. Istanbul one year we got a red flag when there was a bunch uh, some stray dogs went on the track I think it was was it Istanbul or India I think it was uh, yeah. Istanbul I, I, I think it was Istanbul yeah. yeah and uh, at Red Bull one of the one of the things I love and we're working on bringing this here but anyways nice. that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's <laughs> a, a top secret, top secret. But yeah. we had like a pretty great uh, speaker system in the in the garage and uh, some some mechanic like uh, anybody could go on and like play whatever want oh, we're like, like down for a red red flag with the dogs on the track and someone puts on like who let the dog out <laughs> oh, like blared and i was like oh, that, was, that was pretty funny oh, that the boat race when we were rain <laughs> yeah LA to, yeah, uh, yeah. At, uh japan that was a good one yeah anyways nice. wow uh next one you can only pick one food for the rest of your life what's it gonna be sushi okay <sighs> Good. If you could switch lives, <laughs> yeah, that was a quick one. If you could switch lives with anybody, who would it be, and what would you do? Probably switch lives with my dog. Oh. <laughs> dog <laughs> and what would you I, do? What? I have a pug. His name is Bert, yeah. and he is just—he's pure zen. Yep. And uh, and you know, I think a sunny day, just being Bert, hanging out in the sun. Love that. What could Adam be better? Yeah, yeah, seriously, man. that's the life. Give Gavin yeah. some pets. Yeah. 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 Oh my god, next question. <laughs> guilty pleasure TV show that you watch. So come on. I do have a guilt guilty uh I, I, I quite like true crime. Oh okay. Uh, okay. So and but like old school true crime, like yeah. oh, old forensic files, that's probably oh. it. Or even <laughs> oh, if if you really know yeah. about forensic files before forensic files was forensic files, it was called medical detectives. Oh wow. Wow. this is like proper nineties early nineties yeah. retro. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be it. That'd be right. it. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds we'll, mysterious. We'll, we'll put, it, we'll put yeah. it on the show notes. Yeah, you need to put up a link for yeah. it. Uh, one superpower and why? Oh, man. That is, that is a tough one. This is a superpower. I think if I could nap on demand, <laughs> that would be great. If I could plane. just be like, I got five minutes and I'm going to get some sleep. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll give you enough for the whole day. One yeah. Of those. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Uh, if I could do that, just yeah. have like instant restful sleep yep I mean, be, that, that i think zach brown's got that yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I think he's i don't understand how, how else he can have as much energy as he's got but i think yeah. he's got that but anyways <laughs> I, I want it fantastic <laughs> fantastic <laughs> we want it too yeah. this is a good one what's the craziest idea you've ever had to improve a car even if it wasn't practical or mm. realistic i've had a lot yeah <laughs> <laughs> a lot of terrible ideas i think one of the great things about race engineering is that you can have a brilliant idea mm -hmm. run on track and it's absolutely horrendous yeah. and you'd be like all right do the opposite yeah and then, you, then, you, then you're like nail it you're like all right sweet it actually doesn't matter nice 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 <laughs> tell anybody yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll Just start the right way yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but if you want like i had this wacky idea when i was at red bull that was like i want to put the roll this is a big geekery but the roll axis of the car higher than the center of gravity 
so that the car would like roll into the corners yeah, rather yeah. than like roll out of the corners uh, yeah, and yeah. like okay. self camber compensate oh. and like wow. and that didn't work well no yeah <laughs> <laughs> like there's, there's pickles in a lot of ways yeah. right i think people still make fun of it red bull but that's okay yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's okay you know it's like sometimes you got to be brave enough to admit an idea and like i don't really understand if this makes sense yeah, yeah. but i'm gonna try but yeah. what do you think like There's some of the best ideas. <laughs> Remember Mercedes with the push in, push out. Oh, yeah. Wasn't that the, the, the dash? dash? The dash. The exactly. Yeah. Like yeah, somebody yeah. would have said that at one point. And someone, I'm sure people were like, yeah. Well, yeah, get out of here. <laughs> and then he's going to pull the steering wheel out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I love that. Uh, next question. Let's talk about predictions for the indie season. Yes. What you, who'd you got? Oh, man. Aaron McLaren, one, two, three. There you go. There you go. I didn't see that one coming. No, no. <laughs> Bold. Honestly, it's, it's that would be awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. Our, we're, we're racers. Obviously, that's what we want. Course, but yeah. uh, you know, it's it it's not to be understated. Like someone was saying the other day, like Ganassi and uh, Penske won every championship since what since Ryan Hunter Ray did it with Andretti. And if you go back, if you take those three teams, like mm -hmm. how long has it been since the team that wasn't one of those three? And it's twenty years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's. It's a big challenge to get there, but um, that's what we're going for. Yeah. Yep. Hey, <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. That's yeah. the goal. You got to have that goal. Yeah. <laughs> um, prediction for F1 season. <sighs> Give me your top three constructors. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I can't. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the truth is I don't I don't follow it as close yeah. as yeah, I yeah, used yeah, to okay, anymore. Yeah. You know, I, I'm interested from, from the greater McLaren racing family side of it. Yeah. But uh, Top testing, though. But, uh, uh, well, yeah, I think, yeah. you know, testing's testing. Testing's yeah. testing. Uh, onwards and upwards, I'm sure. Right. Lots lots coming on, on there. You yeah. know, they, they're, they're going to be a, a top four, I know, and I think they can do that. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. There you um, go. That's but, cool. yeah, and I just I just sit back and watch the show now. Yeah. You know, enjoy it. It's yeah. kind of like, I, you know a lot of people over there, so it's always like, I've always got someone to, to text. Yeah. Be like, well done, or. Yeah. What's the inside image, scoop? I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what the hell did you do there? Yeah. <laughs> 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 but yeah, no, it's not a pick of favorites. Awesome. Nice. Okay. Final, <laughs> final question. You're writing an autobiography about yourself, okay? You have to pick one of these titles that best resonates with you. The Daredevil, the Dreamcatcher, the Hardest Worker, the Free Spirit. Or the Pug. Or the Pug. <laughs> <laughs> so you, gotta, you gotta tell me that again. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> God God damn it, Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Daredevil, the Free Spirit, the Hardest Worker, or the Dreamcatcher. Or the napper. Hmm. Superpower. <laughs> <laughs> Don't distract him. I think it'd be a free spirit in a way. Yeah, probably go for that. You know, honestly, could could like grab a bits of, of a Each. few of those. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a mixture. But yeah, but yeah, we're going to pick one. Why not? Kind of yeah, just want to. spirit. Kind of how I ended up in, in IndyCar, to be honest. is like, I'd done my, I had that run in F1. I loved it. And uh, um, wouldn't have changed it at all. But at the same time, it's like, always loved all kinds of racing yeah you know I, I won't lie to you i've got a i've got a long this is a long-term plan mm -hmm. but a long-term goal is i'd love to win the triple crown oh so let's go i've been fortunate enough to be a part of three monaco uh wins played my little bit and two penske wins mm -hmm. hoping to get a few more here yep and then someday maybe we'll go have a crack at Le Mans but yeah, that, <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, he's set it yeah. on the track limits I have, I have, that's it we are manifesting it right now yeah. it's gonna happen and looking at your career I, I, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if you actually did it yeah we'll give it a go yeah, yeah. yeah no, sure. <laughs> see what happens awesome. well thank you so much for coming on hey, Gavin thanks, where can people me. find you on social media if they want to follow you and stay along for the uh, I'm on Twitter uh, at GW Racer um that's about all I do, really. No TikTok dances yet? No. Nope. Oh. No. <laughs> I might work on it. Make one for Bert. Get Bert on Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would do well. We need a Bert See? fan account. We, yep. we could use that, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, well, thank you again. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please go and check out our other, other episodes on tracklimitspod.com. Give us a follow on social media, and we will see you guys at the next episode. <laughs> <laughs>